<laughs> Occupational hazard. <laughs> okay, so 20 times 200 meters at 5% and we're focusing on building speed, strength, but also running form. So really, you want to make race pace feel easier. Okay, so the warm-up for this is literally priming the body, ready to run those intervals fast. So the first two will be controlled, but I want to be running as fast as I really want in the interval session during the warm-up. It's like not fairly. 50 dogs. Yeah. 50 <laughs> so, this is all you need. You need a little hill, 200 meters, ideally 400 or more. These are hill sprints. For me, it's quick. It eh? might not be quick for you, this, but it's all about building the speed, building the strength in the glutes, the big power muscles, the hamstrings. And then I take a little bit extra on the way down because I'm, I'm going up faster than I'm coming down. So I take a minute and 30 on the way back down. And it's just a stretch of road that you need like this, five, six, seven percent. Um, this is in Chiang Mai. It's perfect for what I need it for. And it's so, you know, there's traffic around now and again, you've got to make it happen. But it's, it does exactly what it's needed to. And this is still in the warm-up, still priming the body. By the time the warm-up's done, you should be sweating. You should have done at least 100 meters, 150 meters, times two at the pace that you want to judge the entire 20 times 200 meters. And that's the key. You don't want to be going into the 20 times 200 meters and getting any of it for free. So straight away, you want your heart rate up there because it's already been up there to the heart rate you want to achieve in the first and second rep in the warm up. So, this is the first rep. I'm well warmed up for it. My body's primed. I'm trying to hit that at the pace that I think I can sustain 20 of them for. So, the first two should be easy. Just gradually feeling your way into it, using the right muscles. And this is the magic of hill reps. They force you to use your body in the right way and become a better runner. You've got to push off with the glutes and the hamstrings. The calves are not gonna cut it up going uphill at pace, or you'll soon find out about it. shorter, more explosive reps, much more difficult to pace. And so if you can pace a session like this and be coming out at around about the same pace for every interval, it's gonna help you pace your short races for sure, but also your longer, also your half marathons, marathons as well. And it's about getting the calories in afterwards. And if that's Italian food, pasta, I love pasta, fantastic. And if you're ever in this part of the world, Chiang Mai, I promise you it's a, it's a mecca for running, but it's also a mecca for vegan food as well. Uh, it's such a nice vibe to it, these older restaurants and cafe, coffee shops and live musicians, it's perfect. So what are we looking for here? Hill reps, 20 times 200 meters, so just 8.4 kilometers of hard work. Good warm up, good cool down, so you're priming your body for it. Just over five miles of hard work, but that session really, really kicks. 
and then this is the it's just the up and down so that's as simple as it needs to be and what am i looking for the heart rate at a glance there i'm happy with immediately i'm happy with it the pace is about right and I've, as i said before it's important to pace this well and it's difficult to pace it well but the fact that i'm already getting into let's have a look at garmin connect for a little bit more info let's get me out of the way um, and the heart rate here, so I'm already getting up to 171 beats in the first rep, and that's not possible, 177 in the second rep, not possible without a really good warm-up where you're hitting a couple of reps at 100, 150, even 200 meters, even the full rep length once or twice in order to put yourself in a good position to really hit the 20. And then what I'm seeing there is the peaks are pretty much all in control, and the valleys, the heart rate is recovering nicely in between 133, 134, and throughout the session, a little bit less earlier on. That's great. What you can also tell from this at a glance, if, you, you know, if you've got the heart rate monitor or if your watch does this, run cadence and stride length is interesting and ground contact time. So these three together, if your run cadence starts to trend up, which it will with a lot of you, not just in a sprint session like this or a faster session, but any interval session and towards the end of your races, your run cadence is going up. Then your stride length will come down and that will mean that your, your glutes are getting weak, your power muscles are getting weak and you're not able to propel yourself over the ground. Ground contact time, when you get a bit labored, when you get a bit tired, that'll start to that'll start to, to go up as well. So you'd be spending more time on the ground instead of fast feet. Those three are really good indicators. And simple fix, and this is an opportunity for, for you guys, simple fix here is power work in the gym and sprint sessions like this. If you're switching on and able to engage the glutes, the hamstrings, the big power muscles, and the quads are not going to get fatigued, but the calves know that the, they're also going to take a little bit of a hit, then the stride length should stay strong throughout your races and throughout your interval sessions. The run cadence can feel comfortable. That's not going crazy, and therefore your heart rate is going out of control, and then you're into the red. And your ground contact time, therefore, should stay around about the same. And you want that level of consistency. This is only, only five miles or only eight kilometers. So it's quite comfy to do that. But as you saw from the videos, had to put in quite a lot of effort because it started to get steep towards the end. And it's important to dig in there because that's when you get in the power.